Welcome to the 2018 Year in Review SC2K show. This is Ron Moore, along with Mexicool and Jeff. Hey. Hey, am I getting paid for this? Yeah, we, we... Patreon. Okay, good. Fortunately oh. not. Uh, I don't even have a Patreon, Ronnie. I donate to you. <laughs> and I never use it. <laughs> I, <can't laughs> I know, it doesn't... It doesn't bother me because it's a dollar a month, so I'm like, okay, yeah. that's that's fine. And people, oh, you're $1, doing it for the $1. money, Ronnie. Yeah, I get paid one dollar a month. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it for the money. That's paying bills. <laughs> hey, hey, Ronnie, in ten months you can afford a cheap mouse. It's okay. Yeah. I even get the full oh, dollar. Wow. I just taking out for taxes or not taxes, uh, percentage to Patreon or whatever. So I might like you like <laughs> seventy or eighty cents, but whatever. Um. Damn, they're almost charging thirty percent. I think That's so. Insane. Last time I checked, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna build a Patreon wall, and I need uh, to set up a GoFundMe, and it's gonna be huge. No, no, it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be huge, man. It's gonna be huge. Yeah. All right. So 2018, uh, not a bad year for SC2K. Um, and we have we got Mexico that started doing his own LPs on the channel. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Rabbit Spectre and commentary, Jeff and commentary. We did some op obscure games this year, but I'm gonna go in chronological order here and start with January, uh, New Year's Day. I live streamed. I was continuing with continuing my live stream of Star Tropics, and uh, th uh, this particular one is Star Tropics Part Four. And for those of you who remember, I did an LP of this game on the channel back in uh, 2010, I believe, and that LP was pretty fun to do. And in this live stream, it was uh, just uh, something because sometimes some people do join me in commentary. And this one, it was Ravenous Spectre in commentary. Uh, I'm looking at the description box here. And uh, if Tibbs or someone that does not have a channel, or actually Tibbs does have a channel, but he never even uses it anymore, so I never plug it. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly who was in the stream with me or in commentary with me by looking in the description box. But because I don't always put the channels in the description box if they don't even have a channel to begin with or never use it. But uh, in this case, it did say Raven Inspector was in commentary with me. Uh, and Star Tropics, that was pretty fun to do as far as the LP and the live stream. And yes, I did use ECW mode because that game is pretty challenging. Even without the. W. Yeah, it is ECW. Even without the. Uh, even when you're using invincibility, it's still challenging because it's an adventure game and you got to figure stuff out. So, Jeff, were you ever familiar with Star Tropics? I I played a little bit of it. It wasn't my cup of tea. But come on, you're being a, you're being a little baby, Ronnie. You got to play that. You got to die and die and die until you finally beat it. No. It's supposed to take you. It's supposed to take you a year. No. Anyway, uh, the next one is. The S2K Show 2017 a Year in Review. And let me look in the description box here to remember who was in there with me. Oh, yeah. Raven Spectre. With me, Raven Spectre, and Jeff. Talk about S2K in 2017. Oh, and near the end, Tibbs has some pre recorded comments because he couldn't be there live. But, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And let's see here. Cameo appearance by Mexico. I'm oh, joking. Yeah, I don't think quite yet. Not quite yet. And then in January, I continued the LP of Mega Man 9. And were you in any of the commentaries for that one, Mexico? school one? I know, I think Jeff was in some commentaries for that one. Uh, Mega Man 9? Yeah. Remember off the top of my head. It doesn't sound too familiar. I wouldn't say that I am. I'll be there for Mega Man 19. Should be pretty good. And then later on in the month, I continued, or I finished, the Let's Play of Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, Jeff's favorite Castlevania game. Uh, um, just, just the best. You can't even play, like, Super Castlevania or Symphony of the... S Symphony. Damn it, I keep wanting to say Symphony. I probably Sim could, Sim but then again, uh, since I don't have the actual game, if I use someone's footage, I might get copyright strike, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, that was a fun, less discussed to do because Raven Spectre and Small Tummy Wonderful, and this is for the first time ever, Mexico makes his debut. And it was the uh, discussed portion of it, and that was funny because of the ending of the game and Raven Spectre's voice acting. 
That was pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah. And that was recorded for us by, uh, if I said his name right, Sano of World of Long Plays. It actually did that. January 19th, Jeff's LP of Microsoft Paint Wild Wild West. I mean, uh, the town with no name. As, as Ronnie likes to say, the town with no game, because Ronnie is a boomer and his jokes are terrible. Yeah, and so is your choice of Let's Plays here. Our town with no name. Uh, it, at least it's unique. <laughs> so, it don't mean it's cool. Uh, just because something's different don't mean it should be done. And, or that's cool. Just uh, because we, we don't want to see Mega Man 8 for the 15th time on right? YouTube. We only did Mega Man 8 one time on the channel. Thank you very it, much. And Ronnie, so, I, was just, I was just speaking in generalities. I didn't um, actually know. And so, yeah, yeah but really. apparently Bionic Phoenix is in the game. No, not really, but... <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is uh, was pretty fun to do because how stupid the game is and how uh, and recently ABGM reviewed it. Yeah, yeah, he, he got a hold of him in Amiga CD TV, which is... You know, we always seem to be slightly ahead of the ABGM in some of my Let's Plays, I've noticed. It's very weird. It's like it's like I'm like, uh, I got a list of his Let's Plays or something. He yeah. checks out our channel. He checks out the channel, and he's like, "Oh, this looks good." Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking because it's the only people who've done that is uh, Water Log Plays did it, of course, and then Retu Prey did their own, and we did it, and he did. It. That's the only ones I can think of. Yeah. And I noticed the file extension. It says M M two T S. What is that? M two T S. Yeah. The raw file. Hmm. The, the raw file. It says Tower No Name dot M two T S. Oh, it's some kind of Amiga video file back from the 90s. I, uh, just, it's, it, Ronnie, I, I don't know if, I don't know how long you've been using computers. I've been using computers 93, 94, and there's just been so many weird video formats to come out in the last 20, 30 years that you, you can't even keep track anymore. I tried to convert everything over to like an MP4, but I guess I must have forgot. I'm glad you were able to use it, but... Oh, wow, so you actually play the actual game off the actual console or the computer? Uh, yes, um, well, I have an Amiga 4000, but it's, uh, I, I'm hoping to hold on to it, but it's kind of, what, what happens with the Amiga, I'll explain it real quick, is the batteries inside of them are made out of NICAD, and so they will blow up if you're not careful. I've had to change it a few times, and uh, I, I, I'm trying to, like, coax it to keep it going. Yeah. But eventually, I'm gonna have to get like a new hard drive and stuff. But you gotta get it uses like uh, right before SCSI adapters. I don't know if you know what SCSI are, but that's before SATA and that's before IDE. It's I'll, I'll stop talking computer talk. But anyway, it's a fucking nightmare to maintain it. All I'll say. I bet. You know, said, I'm looking in the what's it called the the video manager here, and it says like video information. It says channel ST2K. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Like, I didn't know what account I was logged into. And, like, it's just the channel S2K. I don't know. That was just weird. But anyway, January 24th, <laughs> I started the new XLP of Castlevania 64. I'm Jeff's, another one of Jeff's favorite. With the awesome camera angles and all that good stuff. Castlevania 64. This is during a time where I switched around the LPs. Because uh, on the Rumble channel, I actually did start around Halloween 2017. I did Castlevania 64 on my channel and doing Legacy of Darkness on the S2K channel. Now I'm flip flopping the LPs on the channels and doing Castlevania 64 on S2K and vice versa. So, yeah. And, I mean, I, I know it gets a lot of flack, just like Simon's Quest did, but I still like the Castlevania 64 games. So yeah, I you know, you played. You know, you played those, and then last month I got a whole box of 64 games, and both the Castlevania games were in there, and I was just thinking of you. It was like, really? <laughs> um, this is fun to do. March 25th, I was at a the Arlington Free Play Arcade, and they were hosting a Super Street Fighter 2 tournament. Nice. And I live-streamed that a little bit from my phone. It was two different parts. Uh, or not, no, three different parts. And, uh... So that was pretty fun to do. I was watching people play, and I didn't participate myself because I just cannot, I'm not good at using a joystick in an arcade. So I would get nowhere in that tournament. And so it was pretty fun to stream. And uh, yeah, so that that was pretty cool. Uh, that was the last time I've been to that arcade. It was back in Mar March 25th is when it was streamed. And so that was real fun to be a part of. Super Street Fighter 2 
tournament. And in March, I started. No, this is a live stream of uh, Ninja Gaiden. I was about to say, what? We did Ninja Gaiden was done in 2009. What is it? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. This is the live stream that I did of Ninja Gaiden. And Raven Spectre was in commentary with me on that. And that's pretty interesting because that was the very first LP on the channel. And that was where Jeff's mother made her debut. <laughs> oh my oh. god, yeah, what was that, like, almost ten years ago? Was it nine years ago? July 20th would be ten years officially. Oh my god, that's... I'm, I'm old. I, Ronnie, we're all old. And the first words were, <laughs> Jeff, get the clothes out of the dryer. Yep, yep, that was that was mom. Oh my god. <laughs> it, it's just weird to look back now, you know, I was going to school, I was still living with my parents, I think for about another year, year and a half, and now I own a house. It's just, I think, life, life's weird, you know? Yeah. Life changes. Well, that's true. It's like, well, I can have yeah. it in 10 years. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't think I'd be here, you know what I mean? And I didn't set a lot of high goals for myself, but, man, 10 years, it's... Yeah. Pardon my language, it's a motherfucker. Like, that's... Well, you see yourself in 10 years. That, that, exactly. Yeah. And this is fun to do. April 10th, let's play Super Mario Crossover. Oh, boy. I seen that on YouTube, and I was like, man, I gotta... I wanna do an LP of that. Is that, is that, that some... In, what was that? Oh, sorry. Is that some kind of Mario ROM hack or something? Yeah, pretty much. And you play as uh, many different characters, uh, uh, Samus, Ryu from Ninja Gaiden, uh, characters from Final Fantasy, or you play as Dr. Wily, you play as Mega Man, and whoever else. It was really cool to do, and really cool to see that. That LP was, was pretty cool. I enjoyed it a lot. That yeah. was something, yeah, that was something else. Yeah, and then later on on that day, April 11th, or let's see, uh, uh, April 11th was Mario Crossover. Also on that day was the new OP of Mega Man 10. Now I know, I think uh, Mexico was in several parts of that one as well, as was Raven yep. Specter. Now part two of Mario Crossover is called Super Mario Cross Dresser. <laughs> um, and then you got ECW Crossover. And oh, here, oh yes, this is one of the most fun times of the year to me on the S2K channel. April 23rd, let's play Minnesota Fats Pool Legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh god. My. And uh, Raven Spectre and Jeff was in that one for sure. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to think in my own LP I, I kind of showed up maybe. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, that, that was really, really cool. Um, I, I, it's a terrible idea, but I really, this year, and I don't know when, because I'm so behind on doing any kind of LPs, I want to do an LP where I, pro I don't drink a lot, but where I progressively get more drunk about uh, the LP. I'd probably have to have you record it, Ronnie, and because, honestly, at that point, I'd be like, well, I can't stop it. Where's the record button? Are you trying to be like Minecraft, Martin? No, no, I just thought it'd be a little funny. No, I'm not. I'm making fun of alcoholism, you know. And that's someone that I miss uh, yeah. right there. Minecraft Martin, he really disappeared from the face of the earth. And <laughs> Well, because yeah. he fucking let's play his Minecraft. Well, this is 2019. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, to disappear from the face of the earth uh, is a totally different story. I know. Well, maybe he went to AA or something. He went to the rehab. I guess. But, I mean... Yeah, I just hope he's doing well. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, just, uh totally gone. I don't log in anything anymore on Skype or lost contact with them. It's so weird, you know, it's just speaking of that, like, internet mysteries, I know three or four people who've just, like, disappeared. Like, I've never heard from them again. And it's just one of those things, like, I wonder what ever happened to those people. There's some people I care less about because I didn't like them or had a falling out with them or, like, uh, some people that, uh, certain certain SC2K members, they got a big head and went on their own because they thought they were better than us. Um, and I could, you know, forget them. Uh, but there oh. was people that I really liked or was close to, and they'll, like, disappear. At least Star Soldier, I know what he's up to. He's on Facebook. I know he's just busy with life and working, and that's mm -hmm. all good. And then there's people, like, it just seems weird that they disappear, and you can't help but to wonder, man, are, did they die? 
Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, there's people, yeah, you, you know, that, that just left because of some disagreement or something. But then, yeah, there's the people who just, like, disappeared. Like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. My mom has all my contact information. If I ever die, you guys will get a message or a call from my mom. So I'd like to believe that, and I will fly out to your funeral. And then yeah. I'll awkwardly go up to your family. Like, hi, yeah, I knew your son for close to a decade now, you know. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, but uh, see, the thing was, ex-Gemini, his dad, in 2007, was sending everybody on his messenger um, a message saying, services will be held on this day, blah, blah, blah. But it was under an account that ex-Gemini didn't really use that much. And so I was like, I think you have the wrong person. And then he goes, did you know Robbie Nishin? I'm probably saying the last name wrong, but did you know Robbie? And that's when it hit me. Because I saw the previous message, and I go, wait a minute. What, what happened? Did he die? He said, yeah, unfortunately, car accident. So that's how I knew about him. If oh. it wasn't for his dad, I don't know if I would ever known about what happened to him. I, I don't know about Discord, but if something happened, uh, Facebook, my wife would let everyone know. So yeah. most people would know pretty quickly. Yeah. And my mom has all my information. Like She has, like, her, uh, there's paper with all my accounts, uh, all my passwords. All my contacts. If anything happens, let these people know what happened. Oh, that's sorry. I didn't mean to lead into that depressing stuff. Damn. Yeah. I know that's something else. I think it's some. I'm about I, to grab a beer. I got to look at my Facebook. I, I, I think I appointed somebody uh, to like uh, have my account. I forgot who it was. That's that sad. I forgot who it was. And I appointed them to have my account. Uh, but I guess like it, I know for sure it's someone I trust to like if something did happen to me, they can log in. And I think there's a way to have your page, like, um, created, I uh, was it, converted, so to speak, to a, a legacy page or a memory page, like, to keep your Facebook up. Yeah. And someone will post, like, I know the wrestler Vader, his son has his Twitter account <laughs> now, because Vader passed away in June. His son's been running the account ever since. Oh, I didn't know Vader passed away. Oh. Yeah, uh, June, yeah. Passed See, away. yeah. All I know is these older wrestlers, like, uh, Mean Gene died, you know, last week, and it was like, oh, Like, yeah. I remember him so much. Like, it's... Yeah. And this, this girl at work told yeah. me, Ronnie, a wrestler died today. I'm like, well, he wasn't a wrestler, but yeah, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I didn't realize he was that old. I thought in the 90s he was, like, in his, you know, early 40s. Now he's already, like, in his 50s by then. Yeah. Um, and so, let's see. Oh, yeah. June 1st. Mexico with his first LP. Let's play Silent Hill 2, yeah. Restless Dreams. The sub scenario. Yep, because the main game is too long to play. Maybe oh, yeah, that would be like a yeah 20 part let's play. Be done like an hour. Yeah. Um, and then July 9th, this is fun to do for me personally. Let's play Discuss WCW NWO Revenge. Like you said, Jeff, we're going to talk about WCW here. WCW! Oh yeah, baby. Fucking NWO, baby, and then Hulk's Hill Turn shit. Man, that was yeah. cool. Yeah. No, I was, as a kid, I have good memories of it. I'm sure if I watch it now, I'm like, this is shit. But yeah. I have this, I don't want to ruin it, you know, I just have these great memories of the mid-90s. I loved this video game in particular. When it came out in high school, you got to play as Goldberg, who at the time was hot, undefeated. Mm -hmm. And uh, Raven, and you get to... Uh, like change the roster of who you want to be in WCW, NWO Black and White, or NWO Red and Black, the Wolfpack, or NWO Hollywood. This game was very cool at the time. THQ did a great job making these games back then. Oh, absolutely. Uh, okay, I mean, THQ. Yeah, those Nintendo 64 wrestling games are much better than the PS1 wrestling games. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. No, they definitely were. Didn't THQ get bought up by Sega? I don't know. I just know they're, well, they were bankrupt a while back. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, their, their IP got bought by Sega, and Sega's done some pretty cool things with their IP, but unfortunately, no WCW, so it's like, well, we're not making those games. Yeah. Sega! Uh, was, what was it? They got bought by WWF for, like, pennies on the dollar. Yeah. 2002, yeah. Yeah, 2000, well, 2001, actually. WCW needed oh. to go under. They were complete garbage. No, they, they really got bad. I was reading about the history, and, like, uh, was it Vince Russo and some other guy, like, really just fucked up everything? They had, like, oh. a good, what, about 98 or so, they were doing pretty well. 
But you know what? Uh, they in '99, '98, they were doing good. But by '99, man, it was like it started to go downhill. Really going downhill in the summer of '99. I remember watching during that time, and I said, "Man, this this company sucks now." The NWO just died a silent death with no storyline ending. It just like they just dissolved. It's like yeah, that. That's what I mean. Like the, the new like head Vince Russo, he wrote he he was like he wanted to do like more soap opera style scripts, like really terrible and trashy stuff. Yeah, but and, it was it really goes uh -huh. back to Bischoff, not not building yeah. new talent. Oh, at the sorry. Time. Yeah, Bischoff too. I forgot about him. I mean, Russo didn't help, but everyone no. wants to blame Russo solely for it. He can't. It, it's what? not solely his fault. No, it's Bishop's fault too. I, I agree with you there, a hundred percent. What? He said Bishop or Bischoff? Bischoff. <laughs> Shut up. Bitch quick. I think, I'm thinking of aliens. Oh. No, uh, no, well, what, I, you know, I was, I was really, I understand now, wrestling is like the last, like, Shakespearean uh, art out there, you know, it's like the last form of Shakespearean plays, and if you turn it into just trash of the week, which WCW did, it's not good anymore, like, it's, wrestling's not gonna be, like, the best show ever, but it's like the last form of true acting. Yeah. I can I agree. Well, I don't want to watch it because it's fake. Well, the Infinity War was fake. Yeah, but it was yeah, good. Exactly. That's my point. Um, comic book nerds, yeah, so go read your comic books. Yeah, I can. I get it if people think I don't want to watch wrestling because it's stupid or I don't find it entertaining. But to, if, to use the excuse because it's fake and it's scripted, that that logic makes no. There's no logic in that because like movies are also scripted and choreographed, and they also get hurt with the stunt doubles and. Brandon Lee even got killed in the making of The Crow. I mean, yep. so, I mean, uh, wrestling is, uh, just because it's scripted, uh, you're not going to watch it? Okay, oh, I yeah. just don't watch movies Half either. Gravity. And I I'm not going to lie, I think I said it before to you, Ronnie, when I was, you know, a little bit younger, I was like, oh, wrestling's fake, that's why, you know, I found out and I stopped. No, that wasn't it. Yeah. It I don't know, for, for me, wrestling just got, I feel like with, especially when they turned it into WWE, it just got old. Like, I don't know what happened. The formula, I think really the, like, the Monday Night Wars were like the best for my lifetime of wrestling, in my opinion. Yeah. And then it just, unfortunately, it, wrestling apparently is still good, and like I said, still have tens of millions of fans in the world, but to me, it just hasn't been that good ever since. Yeah, that's true. The there probably won't ever be an era like that. I mean, mm -hmm. in the 90s, when, uh, especially the Money Not War from 95 to 2001, mm -hmm. I mean, man, like, uh, as far as, like, financially and popularity, wrestling uh, was never like that before or after. I mean, wrestling was popular in the 80s as far as, like, Hulk Hogan and, and, uh, and the NWA, Ric Flair, and the Horsemen, and all that stuff. But, like, as far as, like, the and mainstream media and popularity and the money that the companies are making, especially WWE under the Stone Cold, the Stone Cold uh, being champion and being mm -hmm. in his prime, there was no era with, like uh, between '95 and 2001. Mm -hmm. And that was truly, yeah, for me, that was the I remember that so well because we would, you know, my parents were really into it, so we'd get, you know, usually get to watch a lot of the pay per views. Or if mom didn't want to spend the money, we'd go over to a friend's house and split the cost with them. Yeah, I mean, one I... time someone. Uh, that already it was Royal Rumble 2014. This person uh -huh. had or, already ordered the pay per view, uh -huh. and I said, "Oh, well, can I can't come over and watch it." Uh, yeah, but can you uh, uh, chip in twenty dollars for what? You already paid for it. You exactly. already ordered it. What? And then uh, this is a friend of uh, Jody and Justin's, and Jody and Justin got all over him later on. Like, what? Well, how are you gonna charge Ronnie to order a pay per view that you already ordered anyway? What is he paying for? Exactly. I can understand, like, chipping in, like, helping chip in for pizza or whatever, refreshments and all that stuff. You're having a bunch of guys come over and watch wrestling. I get that. I wouldn't mind doing chipping in a little bit for that. But for the paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Agree. Or if, yeah. If you guys, if you were just like, yeah, um, you know, well, you know, if, if he's going to buy it and you guys agree to go on it together. But he's already bought it. Exactly. And this is one month before the network. So, uh, you know, it's not like a, at the time I couldn't get the network and just watch it for nine ninety nine. Exactly. So, uh, but that was so stupid. Who like, still pays uh, for pay-per-view at that point? If you love wrestling, you might as well just have the network. Yeah, and I when I, back in the day, when I used to order pay-per-views all the time, I didn't charge anybody to come over and watch it. That's exactly. stupid. If they want to come over, I think even someone at work said, uh, are you going to charge them for coming over? For what? 
I'm going to already watch it. Now, if, if it's a oh, wrestling show, boy. I don't care to order. And they're like, man, Ronnie, I want to. Are you going to order it? I said, no, nah, I don't care to see that. Oh, man, I want to. Well, if you want to order it, then pay me the money and you can come over and watch it. But if it's something I'm going to already order to begin with, what, what? What? It's not like I have to legally charge a cover charge. That's stupid. It's not like I own a restaurant and you have to pay a cover charge to order UFC or anything like that. It, it's, it's so that's stupid. It's just people trying to get over on you and to, to just to get your money to order something that you already ordered. So that was stupid. I'm not. Gonna, oh yeah. I told him, not never mind. I'm not going to pay you twenty dollars to watch something that you already ordered to begin with. What, what's the money going to the cable bill? You already ordered it, <laughs> so you pay for it, jackass. Anyway, uh, the next thing I live streamed on the S2K channel. We're speaking of more. Speaking of wrestling, it's some more wrestling we're going to talk about here. August 10th, WWF WrestleMania the arcade game for the SNES. Who remembers that? I do not, unfortunately. Well, maybe not the stream, but the game. Uh, Mexico, yeah, yeah. Mexico's in commentary as well as Danny in that one. Mexico's yeah, like, game. I don't have no recollection of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was not there for that. Uh, you can't prove that. Yeah. Um, to speak with my lawyer. Yeah, uh, I was not good at this game. It was kind of fun back then, but didn't age well. But at the time, it was fun. That game so hard. I played it in the arcade, and that's about it. I played. Oh, which one was it? I played the SNES. I streamed the SNES version. It only had six wrestlers. Six. Six. Really? Well, it was a it was an arcade game. That's pretty standard for your I mid nineties arcade games. Oh well, yeah, I guess so. But Genesis version had eight. See, J be better than Genesis. Well, you're right this time, Jeff. Oh, hold on. I got, I got to get my old Jeff voice. He, he be better than I, I, I can't do my like original old voice. Oh, so you're, you're trying to impersonate your own voice. Yeah, I'm. It's like a David Lynch movie going on over here. <laughs> Becky Lynch. You she, are. She's the man. Anyway, I don't mean that movie with uh, was it Amanda Bynes? She's the man. Never mind. Oh damn. Anyway, how, how are you? Are you a fan of Amanda Bynes? Is that what you're no, I to just tell remember me? the movie and the trailer and all that stuff. Uh, she's made a comeback, I think. Actually, has she? Yeah, that that Dan Schneider guy who directed uh, her and a whole bunch of Nickelodeon shows. Turns out he might be a pedophile who's really obsessed with feet, and so he really messed up her life. That's why she was so messed up all these years. Well, that being wow. said, uh, <laughs> now join us in the Discord on the conversation is Chris Hansen. Chris, how's it going? Uh, well, why, why don't you take a seat there? Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so and more wrestling August 15th. I live streamed the WWF Royal Rumble for the SNES and Genesis. That was Whoa. fun to do. I loved those games back in the day. The Genesis version has Hulk Hogan in it, so that right there is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, uh, Genesis I love uh, the, does. but I had more fun watching the CPU go at it in the Royal Rumble match on the highest difficulty <laughs> than I did playing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but back then it was cool though. The, those games didn't, don't age well, but they were fun back in the day. Yeah. Uh, Ric Flair is in the SNES version. I don't think he's in the Woo! SNES Yeah. Mr. Perfect, I think, is the SNES version. Uh, yeah. And so I remember AVGN actually, or not this, not the wrestling episode, uh, AVGN wrestling games episode, but he also did a James and Mike Monday, I think. It was him and James. I mean, him and, uh, James and Mike, and then uh, two other people sitting there. Uh, one of them, I don't know if it's Pro John or Proton John or whoever it is. Oh, yeah. Proton John, I used to not like him, and now I really like him. Watching a lot of And stuff some other guy that looks like Dr. Harvey Wimpleman. Uh, and he's like, I think, a, a guy with glasses, not Doug Andrews or whatever his name is, the nostalgia critic, but I know the guy with glasses that sat there, and he like knows a lot about wrestling. He sat and played the games with, I think they did Roy Rumble for. Uh, SNES in particular, and uh, that was fun to watch. You know, being me being a wrestling fan, they sat there and started talking about um, which which wrestlers and which port, and they were talking about th th these games came out in '93. By that time, Hogan was getting ready to leave the company, uh -huh. and like he was filming Thunder in Paradise at the time. Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, and oh yeah, here we go. September 2nd, let's play Space Pirates. No. Arrgh! Oh. Space Pirates! Yeah. I put in the description box. Was this game pirated? Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, it says, Jeff quote-unquote plays Space Pirates. Jeez. 
You can't really play a game on a laser disc, but you can try. Yeah, makes the cool is in commentary with us. Unfortunately. Which, unfortunately, I did have to emulate that one, but if anyone has a copy of it, you can send it to me. I own a laser disc player. I don't know why, but I own a, a dual um, a dual laser laser disc player, so please send me that. And there you go. September 9th, Jeff, Jeff's favorite uh, video that we did on the channel all year long. Let's check out Princess Tomato in the ECW Kingdom. I think I was half awake and like, just like, what the fuck is Ronnie, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, you were like, R Ronnie, really? R really, Ronnie? Princess Tomato and that, but it had 20 thumbs up and 100, 100 views is actually pretty good for us. Uh, 34 yeah. comments of, po of nothing but positive comments saying, this is funny, and like you, 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 you never know what you're gonna get on the SC2K channel. Like you go from uh, sp space good. pirates to tomato, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom, and all this stuff. So that that, well, that that video got a lot of positive feedback. I think that's just a testimony to the uniqueness of all of us. We're all into different things, so it yeah. really gives it gets a good blend to your channel. Yeah, and we're all this together here, yeah. and all the variety and all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, and September 23rd, I did a, uh, live Q&A, live, live stream, about an hour, over an hour long, and, uh, yeah, so the Q&As, I don't do many of those, so it's kind of important when, when I do those. I think someone requested I do another one, because there's a part three also, a few days later. Um, and then published on October 21st, the 20th anniversary of this game's release in North America, let's play Metal Gear Solid, which we're still doing yeah. right now. <laughs> and Tibbs was in that one. He had to be in that one. Um, now some of the, uh, this might be slightly out of order chronologically because some of these videos are upload, but I don't have them scheduled to go live until later on, so it looks different on my list here. But October 1st, what well, did go live, or not live, but you know, public, Resident Evil the ECW Chronicles. Yep, the first full LP that I've done, you know, a full game or whatever or not. Uh, that has a lot of good scenario. positive feedback too. 21 I thumbs think up. people wanted another Resident Evil game on the channel. I'm not sure. Maybe. 21 we, thumbs we, up. What now? You know what? It, we, sh we, should, we should both do one, Mexico. You should pick your favorite, and I think I should pick my favorite. Um... Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles Part 1. The first one, 21 thumbs up, zero thumbs down. I'm not trying to make it all about, oh yeah, we have no thumbs down, because either way, we get a view. So, whenever videos get thumbs down, it's not about a big deal. And plus, Ronnie, you, you know I'm going to go put thumbs down on all your videos now, right? Well, that's fine. <laughs> that, that gives us another view. I don't even care. I don't even care, because, like, seriously, that gives us another view. What's it going to do, hurt us? No. Uh, Good point. I just, I just happened to notice the positive feedback on some of these videos 21 thumbs up zero thumbs down 103 views 45 comments and wow. I remember I remember uh, speaking of thumbs down like and say what you want about we guy but someone years ago like we guy had like a video that had no thumbs down and then someone gave him a thumbs down just to break that streak so to speak just to have, be the first to thumbs it down and the person posted a comment saying plop I had to drop a thumbs down in there just because there was no thumbs down. Who is it, Brock Lesnar? He had to end the uh, streak. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then we got just responded, well, while that's a lame reason, at least you're up front about it. So, and I remember Xander saying a while back, you know, if you get a thumbs down, who cares? Don't cry about it. It just means you get another view. Yeah, that's a good point, because the thumbs down not going to hurt us. And so, yeah. I agree. Uh, uh, part two, let's play ECW Gear Solid. Um, we have Revolver. Ocelot. And then part three, let's play Metal Gear ECW. Pub uh, yeah. Uploaded on my birthday, but not published till October 23rd. Um, and then we're continuing with the Metal Gear Solid series and the Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. So those two LPs are still going. Yep. Uh, the fun live stream I did, Halloween special, Nightmare on Elm Street for the NES. That featured me, Danny, and Gentoo for the first time in a long time. What? Yeah. Gentoo. Uh, who else? Yeah. It was, yeah. 
me, Gentoo, and Danny. That was Gentoo's first SCTK appearance in probably years. Damn. So that was pretty fun to do. Uh, the next LP, uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. It got taken down for copyright. Here we go, people. Yeah, and so while I'm not going to mention the YouTuber's name, even though it's not a total secret, the reason why is because I really don't want anybody to troll. Gentoo wants to troll this guy, but since the guy didn't get back to me or, or troll me and run his mouth or anything, I'm going to let it go this time. But basically, yes, it's no secret that I do use other people's footage for LPs a lot while giving credit to them. Um, this person didn't like that. So one day I got a comment on part one of the Ocarina of Time, because there was just two parts uploaded at the time. It said something like, the, the, the guy that filed the copyright claim that I took the footage from said, remove these videos. They is my property and I did not give you permission to use them. And I responded saying, you don't own the copyrights either, but, but before I can even remove them, even, not that I was, but before I can even remove them myself, he filed copyright claims on both parts one and two, giving the channel two strikes. And so I just, I was like, really, how, really? He don't own the copyrights to this either. He, Nintendo does. So how is he just able to easily and it's nothing new because people file false uh, copyright claims all the time and false flag. But I've been doing this for about two years where I take people's footage, upload them, give the illusion that I'm playing them but still give credit. Or sometimes flat out say in the video, like one time Jeff, you said, are you playing this or someone else? I said someone else. And you can tell who that person is by looking in the description box. And so I gave credit. To, I would link people to the description box. This is where the source of this footage came from. Yes, it is their gameplay, but first of all, it's just gameplay. It's not even commentary or a custom review to where it, everything was edited and all that stuff. Second, um, Nintendo actually owns Ocarina of Time, so if anybody were to file a copyright claim on me, on the, on the channel, for Ocarina of Time, it should be Nintendo, legally. So, for me to file a counterclaim, I would have to fill out a form and give the claimant my personal information because this, this is a legal dispute. So I would have to fill out a form, tell him my full, first, middle, last name, my address, my phone number, and all that stuff. What? No way, Jose. I'm not going to do that because, number one, this person could get butt hurt, prank call me, send me stuff in the mail, or whatever. I don't want to give out my private information to some random YouTuber like that. Really? And number two, it should go both ways. Why can't I have this person's private information if he's filing a legal dispute on me? The only thing I got of him was the email address. And I did email him, kindly and politely asked him to please retract his claim because I did take your footage, but I gave you credit for it. Nintendo actually owns the copyrights. We don't. If you can retract your claim, we can continue this LP without starting over, and I will still give you credit linking people to your channel. He never ever responded. Um, and so, I just decided to let it go, but what bothered me, and I talked about this in the state of the S2K address, was, okay, I have a lot of footage that I uh, borrowed or stole, whatever you want to call it from, uh, but I always gave credit in the description box, which, why would they care if you give them credit and if someone took my footage, my raw footage of gameplay and used it, fine. I'd be fine with that. And so this was just a bunch of BS. What if someone, more people catch on and flag all, every video I've ever done and my channels get terminated because of this? That is just so much BS. And I'm not going to go back and delete all the videos that I borrowed footage from just to avoid being terminated. If I get terminated, so be it. And I explained all this in the uh, ST2K, ST2K address video. Uh, for those of you who want to get my full opinion on this and, and the full story, even though I pretty much told the whole story. Um, yeah, so that's why Ocarina of Time LP was taken down. Part 1 was published on November 23rd, 2018, uh, right on the 20th anniversary of the game's release in North America. But because this guy got butthurt and he somehow owns 
the copyright stalking at time and YouTube has allowed them to take it down. Uh, the LP is scrapped for now, but we will restart the LP soon. And I will be using World of Long Place footage, which, which has gone on record. They have gone on record as to say they do not care if we use their footage as long as we give credit. Which is what I've always done, so there should be no problem. Down Phoenix posted a comment on my uh, video where I was talking about this. He said, here's a little tip in looking for a video for, for footage to use. Don't, uh, when you search for footage, go to the filter and select Creative Commons. That is basically telling you they don't care if you use their footage. It's for all to re-upload or whatever. They might still want credit for it, like in the description box or wherever, but you're welcome to use it, and they will not file a copyright claim on you. I did do a search on Metal Gear Solid, the footage I'm using, and yeah, it is under Creative Commons. So that person, that, that might be the reason why Metal Gear Solid has been taken down, because it's under Creative Commons. They welcome anybody to re-upload it and just give them credit. Word of Long Place says you can use whatever footage you want of ours. Just put the link to the website, the Let's Player that did the Let's Play, and the link to the YouTube channel in the description box. And uh, there'll be no problems. So soon we will restart Ocarina of Time again. And it was also Tibbs in that part. The first two part, it was me, Tibbs, and a new S2K commentator named Lady Zelda, who is a friend of ours on Facebook. Who is a huge Zelda fan obviously and, and uh, a real nice girl who really wanted to be in this LP and then it gets taken down her debut is ruined that sucks. because this douchebag decided to follow this BS copyright strike on our channel and so yeah that sucks so that's why Ocarina Time is scrapped for now but we'll be back again soon and we would be using probably better gameplay footage because World of Long Plays does better gameplay footage pretty much anyway. And I don't. My footage sucks. Going on the record. <laughs> and, and what are you gonna do? File a copyright claim on us with your own footage? No. <laughs> That's not Mexico. So yeah, that would not that. be Mexico at all. Yeah. And speaking of the video, I did that, do that video, State of the Ronmore S2K, S2K address, because I mirrored the video on both channels, December 13th when I talked about that. I wasn't going to even do a video of it, but I really, it was really, I really wanted to get off my chest because it made me think, man, what if my other videos get taken down? That's why I was talking about, you know, worst case scenario, we had fun on, on 10 years on, on this on this website, um, and I could start over from scratch, even though we, your channels get terminated on YouTube and they find out you make a new one, they'll terminate that channel too, which I think is extreme. Mm-hmm. But and I think people were asking too, like, yo, what happened to the Zelda LP, or wasn't there a Zelda? Yeah. Yeah, somebody people asked, wanted... and I told them what happened, yeah. Gen 2 was one to troll them. I said, no, nah, let, let... I was hoping he would email me back and say, hey, uh, all right, you know what, that's cool, I'll go ahead and retract the claim. But if he was on a right back, and run his mouth and say, well, screw you guys, it's my footage, and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably tell Jin too, I don't really condone trolling or have sick people on somebody to troll them, but Jin is one of those, like, uh, trolls that would uh, troll people that deserve it, or if you're a friend of his and they're messing with you, he'll troll them back, and I'll just be like, you know what, Bear and Jin too, sick him, <laughs> because this guy <laughs> deserves it, like, how are you going to get oh, mad? How are you gonna file a copyright claim over that? Like, th th that's almost as bad as when I had a wrestling channel back then for a brief period. Uh, the the person on there was somebody on YouTube that had a WCW Starcade '96 footage. Well, answer me this, guys: Who owns the copyrights to WCW today? WWE. Thank you. And so I took that same footage and uploaded it on my channel. He comes to my channel and says, "Hey." You took my footage, even though I took WWE's footage. This is still not done. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Exactly. What? What? First of all, you just contradicted yourself. Did you say Starcade '97? Is that what you said? '96. '96. I've I've seen a review for that. There's a couple YouTube channels that do like wrestling reviews, yeah. and I've never seen anyone copyright them. Yeah, and I don't. It's very iffy. YouTube, you know, how YouTube's a mess today. It, it's oh, a mess. It, 
It is. It'll, it'll be dead. I've, I've already... A lot of people I'm fans of have already moved off to other sites. I, I reopened my Twitch account because I'm getting ready to... If, if Twitch becomes the next YouTube, like as far as a full-fledged video sharing site... I'm, it it, it yeah. won't. It's too it's too sanitized. Like it'll be popular. Twitch will always be popular, but it's so sanitized. I understand there's legal uh, parameters put in place on YouTube for a reason, and there are some videos that do deserve to be flagged and taken down for cop copyright reasons. Yes, like if I upload the full movie of Infinity War, well then yeah, that's my dumbass fault, and I would deserve to get copyright strike. But for stuff like this, or someone else claims that they own ownership or something. And they take it down real quick just to avoid any lawsuits. Like, come on, man. Grow some balls, YouTube. Like, seriously, Google, you have money. If someone takes you to court or whatever, you have money to back stuff up and, and, and all this stuff. Like, you, it's just the copyright laws are so broken, not just on YouTube, but in this country, actually. And all this stuff should fall into fair use. But for this guy to file a copyright claim, and the reason why he could do it is because YouTube, for all they know, is of how... Uh, probably how stupid they are working in their little cubicles. They don't realize that um, Nintendo owns Ocarina of Time, and that when you when you file a copyright claim, you have to provide the link of the video that is plagiarizing yours, and the timestamp of exactly what was plagiarized. So I I was gonna I filled out I did a little test as if I was gonna file a copyright claim on somebody. Mm -hmm. I, I clicked on it, and you had to provide the link of the video you're filing a claim against. And you have to provide a timestamp of when your work was was plagiarized. So this guy, I'm sure it was easy for him to do because if, if YouTube would look at it and say, "Oh wow, he did mirror this guy's video. He did steal his intellectual property or whatever." Or, yeah, this strike is a yeah, this is a, a, a legal uh, claim. So that's why he was able to take it down so easily because the, I did take his footage. But again, it's it should be under fair use. It's video game footage that's owned by Nintendo, not this guy. Oh yeah. Well, YouTube lives in their own little bubble now. We we, yeah. we all know it, and yeah. And unfortunately, all we can do is hope. You know, some other site will come up, and it'll. Yeah. Like uh, right now, I'm really following. There's a lot of there's a lot of shows I watch, and they've all moved over to what's called Stream Me, and it wasn't a very popular website. Well, they moved over, and now it's like number six thousand on the Alexa rating, like rating, like not super high, but pretty decent, you know. Yeah. yeah man, six thousand better than what it was. It's not, it's not. Yeah, it's not going from like sixty thousand to six thousand. Not too shabby. And I may start live streaming on Twitch soon, which will link to my channel. Uh, but. Twitch, one thing I don't like about Twitch, your live streams get archived for only 14 days. Dude, that, 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 that's weird. That is that's... dumb. YouTube, at least you can archive things for life until it gets taken down. Oh, yeah. So, well, YouTube I was about to say... Tw Sorry, go ahead. Twitch is the same site that lets Darkseid fill on there, and he, he had a video up. Well, it doesn't, thank God it doesn't show anything, where he was masturbating right before uh, uh, he did a playthrough, and it was live. So, I mean, you know, that's Twitch for you. Yeah, and but YouTube like that they'll delete. I don't know if they they probably did delete the channel now, but there was a channel where this kid in Chile was torturing his cats or torturing a cat. Um, Ooh. That channel. Yeah, was, I heard about that guy. That channel was still. Uh, he kind of looks like we got, by the way. <laughs> yeah, anyway. he, he does. <laughs> Holy shit, you're right. <laughs> but I'm not God. saying we got tortures cats, but <laughs> well, his name is Nico, so I mean. Um... Wait, the, oh. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, like that channel, it might have been taken down by now. I don't know, but it was like a, a day two or day three. The videos were taken down, but the channel was still up. But yet, yeah, Monkey Jones's channels get deleted. Really? You, you watch Monkey Jones? No, I, didn't I, know I don't. That. But I heard about it. I followed the story. Oh, uh, well, Monkey Jones is amazing. And uh, if you don't watch his movie, How I Shot Stopped a School Shooting, there's something wrong with you. What no, I, I me because I've never seen it, but I have heard about it, and it, it's, it's edgy it's, comedy. It, it is, it's edgy. I really enjoy edgy stuff, and that's what I've been watching a lot for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years now. But uh, yeah, he get, he got screwed hardcore. Yeah, and uh, whether you like it, uh, there's a video that uh, J Man sent me recently. It was a, uh, it's called uh, YouTube's Next Great War. It was just uploaded like last week or so. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about Monkey Jones, how he got terminated, and it's like, man, it's just, 
uh, YouTube, even Keemstar couldn't save uh, Monkey Jones in this one. It was oh, just I like, know. Yeah, it was just a bunch of false copyright claims, like saying this one video was flagged for shocking and disgusting content when all it was was just uh, something that was totally the opposite. And um, it, I am... I am glad the word's getting around. I didn't know you knew anything about Keemstar either. Like, I follow uh, one of my favorite channels, and that's why I've kind of been full of weird shit lately, is uh, Mr. Metakirk. I don't know if you guys have watched Mr. Metakirk stuff. Uh, nah, but... Um... Okay, it's, in the, it's in the same group. Well, he got his whole channel deleted, and uh, Keemstar contacted his um, uh, his guy at YouTube, his little agent they, they gave you, and he got his channel fixed in like four hours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, boy, wow. Yeah. And, and this is Mr. Mr. Medicare has like you know half a million subscribers and is pretty popular. Yeah, and there was someone named Mundane Matt that was. Oh God! Oh God! False copyright <laughs> claiming videos left and right. Yeah, you know about Mundane Matt, the Boulder King. <laughs> I never watched this stuff. I just heard. I, I subscribed to Tipster, and so that's how. I... Oh, Tip Tipster. Yeah, I, I, he, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't mind what he does, but. That picture he posts of himself on his videos is very embarrassing, in my opinion. I just look at that, it's like, you're a grown man. How embarrassing. Uh, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't mind that so much, but uh, you know, you're talking about, like, uh, when he's posing with his Indian zappers? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but when you're, like, in your 30s and you're doing a pose with your Indian zappers with your little sideways cap, it's like, um, I, I'm sorry. I like his videos, though. They're very entertaining. Uh, well, it's just, it's, it's like a four year or you know it's like a 14 year old kid like i'm cool but anyway that doesn't matter but i'm glad you know a little bit about that i'll tell you a little bit about monday and matt real quick okay so matt matt i'm sure you know about the false flagging it sounds like you do know at least that part. yeah yeah um, well anyway uh he tried to get um oh this guy dame pesos who um who's this chilean youtuber not like super popular but he's becoming very popular i think he's got like 50,000 subscribers now well uh monday and matt didn't like something that he posted so he got several of his videos flagged. So now, um, Monday, or, uh, Dame Pesos does a show called The Soilless Matt Show and just makes fun of him once a month. You know, does a whole, like, makes fun of what he's done. Well, he got so mad about that, he tried to flag everything. And he was on what's a show called The Kill Stream, which is hosted by a guy called Ethan Ralph. Um, and, uh, Anyway, they got him to, uh, to put up a screenshot of at least the first page of what he flagged. And it was, yeah. like, all Dame Pesos. And it was, okay, see, so dude, okay. Yeah. And um, so he's never been able to live that down. And so he's he said though, the the night all this happened, like all this shit went down, he said he was out getting boulders like for his yard, and then he took a picture. But wasn't boulders? Well, they call him the Boulder King now because he's fucking retarded. Like you're you're going out to buy boulders, okay? You, that's why you were gone. But anyway, uh, so he 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 apologized for what he did finally. First, he, he did like a he did like a Tumblr uh, blog that apologized. Finally, a couple months later, he went on YouTube and actually did an apology video. Well, now he's with a new group of uh, he's with this group called the Skeptics, and he's like, "That's a fucking lie. I never did anything wrong. I never false flagged anybody." It's like, dude, we have like six months of evidence, you retard, and that's and where he, we're at now. And on the kill kill stream, he had like a bunch of tabs opened. And I think yes. he tried to hide the fact that he did fly the videos. And Keemstar, someone goes, wait, Matt, no. No. I, I, yes, wait a minute, Matt, no. Wait a minute, Matt, no. <laughs> Sorry, I, I love the kill stream so much. I listen to them every weeknight they're on. And if I can if I can at least do a little promotion to people listening out there, check them out. It's pretty entertaining. Every night they got a new kind of guest, just different sides. It's fantastic. Actually, I'm going to... Um, uh, Tennessee in about a week and a half to watch a fight between two people who've been on the kill stream before this uh, coked up Canadian Andy Worski and this uh, this uh, guy named Tonka saw this uh, Native American who's in a wheelchair apparently in a wheelchair he used to be a wrestler but well, they're gonna have an MMA fight like a real MMA fight so I got wow. tickets to see this and I think it's gonna be like if it was like just a debate with them arguing that's what my wife thought it was and it's like no they're actually gonna fight each other they've been training and she's like, oh, that's interesting. It's like, yes, I want to see. I think the Canadian's going to beat the crap out of this other guy, though, to be honest. So it's going to be like the fight on South Park between, uh, I forgot who, what two characters and it was. And it'll, it'll, be, it'll be live on the kill stream as well. Ralph is going to be uh, Andy Worski's uh, like, coach right there with him. So it's going to be Remember the fight on there. South Park where it's a parody of They Live? Yes, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Oh man, they live. That's that's a movie I haven't watched in a while. Yeah, but they. Rest in peace. They really paid for exactly. They would never live that down. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> um. But yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off on that drama stuff, but I didn't know you knew about any. Of yeah, I know a little bit about it. Um. What was I gonna say about Monday Matt? Didn't he? He like I saw a little argument between Tipster and Monday Matt on Twitter. Um, oh God, yes, I forgot about that. Monday Matt said. Uh, I think someone is accusing Monday Matt of like dancing around the the apology, saying because mm -hmm. uh, Monday Matt said I did not get anybody terminated or flagged down. Yep. Yeah, but, he's but dancing. He, did, he went on. Uh huh. Yeah, but he did. He's still false flagged. Oh yeah. He may not have gotten yeah. people taken down, but he's still false flagged. Telling the truth, but like not the whole truth. Yeah, yeah, like like a half truth. I, yeah. That's the best way I can. Yeah, um, he he went on this. Uh, he was talking about this on the stream. Uh, part of the whole skeptics thing. Well, these skeptics, there's like one Crown and T, and he was found out to be an asshole who forced a lady off the internet. And there's just like these other sets of people. This one guy who's transitioning to a girl and talks like he's so like sophisticated, but his mom will post on Twitter how shitty his room looks. Shit like that. It's just. <laughs> You got You got to read into the lore. Like it's it's a lot of a lot of time to waste, but at the same time, it's like if you got some time to entertain yourself, it's great to look into it a little bit more. Yeah. And okay, so I did the uh, address where I talked about the state of the channels. Worst case scenario, if they get deleted, here's what's going on, guys. I could start from scratch, start over. Me and Mexico are trying to archive. As much videos as we can in case the channels do get terminated. Videos, that's it. <laughs> hey, you gotta upload that to your daily motion, baby. <laughs> yeah, but it's hard to find Ooh. a good alternative. I mean, YouTube is is a, is a great site. I mean, you got the premiere feature, you got the scheduled uploads feature, you got uh, YouTube has a lot of great stuff to utilize. But it, uh, hey, go ahead. I like to take this time to suggest Stream dot me. It's an excellent website. You can do, um, you can do, of course, your streams there, but you can also upload and keep everything there. That's pretty cool. Uh, and it's, uh, and if you like people, like a lot of these talk shows who are moving over there, they request, they want, they, uh, they ask for donations if you want to give them. It's much easier to give, and they don't charge you an arm and a leg. They're not taking like you, taking thirty percent of what little bit you get. Yeah. Well, remember VidMe. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, so, uh, Ralph tried to move over to VidMe because he got kicked off of YouTube, he's on stream me now. And he still, he still gets about 2,000 viewers, which is pretty good and nice. But, uh, yeah, he went to VidMe and it was just all garbage. Like, they said, oh, we're gonna fix this and this and this, and they never did. Yeah, and you only had, like, 15 minute time limit, right? Uh, they, they did, that's gone now, you, you can do, um... Oh, no, 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 I don't say unlimited. What? I'm talking about VidMe. Uh, yeah, vid, no, no, I, I, uh, they tried going on VidMe about six months ago, and there wasn't a time limit anymore. Okay, because that's why I got off of VidMe. I said, man, there's a time limit? Forget that. And I tried to do that as an alternative. It seemed like a promising alternative, but not quite. Um, but yeah, I, I, my concern is, like, even if I stop doing videos today, I don't want my channels already to get taken down, like, for historical re and nostalgic reasons. Um, and so that's what I was concerned about. Like, man, if my channels could easily be taken down because of this false copyright BS, I mean, that that's just, uh, that's just messed up. And so I, um, I could start from scratch, re-upload whatever I can, uh, and, yeah, so, but I just can't believe, like, I've done this for two years where I take other people's footage, uh, raw footage of a gameplay, and give credit to them. Never, I never even got a comment. Man, now maybe no one noticed. I don't know, but some people, uh, like not, no one has ever filed anything or sent me a message. Hey, you took my stuff. Nothing. All of a sudden, within uh, two weeks of taking Ocarina time footage from this guy, boom, taken down. First of all, how did he find out about so quick? Second, like for him to take it down for copyright strike. Oh wow, I didn't know he owned Nintendo. And th th this is a big warning to everybody out there. If you have a slight difference of agreement than what uh, the people who work at YouTube think, get the hell off YouTube. Honestly, it's it's time that we've got a plan to make a move. I mean, you don't want to get off yet, but start planning your move now because yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna get your channel striked for no reason. You're, one day your channel could be completely deleted. That's why I'm so glad you're doing archives, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, we had a great run in 10 or 11 years on YouTube, mm -hmm. and. 
I mean, if it, if it were to be the end, we had a great time. I was, I would really hate for the channels to be gone, but mm -hmm. at least we had a great time doing all this stuff. I missed the first five years, like I was on YouTube. That was pretty good times. You didn't really know this other crap going on, and it was just you were having fun. Yeah, I missed 2009, and 2010. That was some good, absolutely. I mean, we had everybody on board at the time. I mean, uh, we got Star Soldier, uh, uh, Gen Two, and J Man, and Green. I mean, we were all oh, yeah. on board for that, and uh, that was that was some good times. Um, absolutely. So. We are continuing with the LP of Metal Gear Solid, and uh, now this is uh, 2019 technically, but January 1st, New Year's Day, we did the first ever premiere video, live premiere on S2K. That was Metal Gear Solid Part 9 with me, J-Man, and Mexico. Yes, J-Man is back. All right. So that was very, very cool. I wanted to utilize the premiere feature for once. And at first, I didn't know what it was, and then I seen tips to use it. And when I when I went to his video while he was premiering, there were people talking in the chat room. So I was confused. I was like, "Oh, so it's a live stream? Okay, well let me chat with everybody here and chat with the Tipster." No, Tipster was not. He might have been live in the chat room, but he wasn't live on camera on live streaming. So I was confused. And then the video ended as if it was a normal normal video, and people were still talking in the chat room. I go, "Wait, what? What is this?" Then I figured out, I did research and read what a premiere actually was. And I said, this is pretty freaking cool. And yeah. I, I wanted to do, I wanted to test it out. And it was a good turnout during the premiere. Uh, who, was who, was really in a, who was in the chat room with us? Uh, Light Heavyweight, I think Chuck Money, uh, and maybe one or two others. I'm I not think sure. Light Heavyweight said too, he was at work on break or lunch or something or whatever. And he's like, oh cool, I'm going to check yeah, that's what he said in his comment, yeah. Yeah, you can schedule yeah, the, the, the people. Yeah, we had a pretty good turnout. I think everybody was kind of intrigued at seeing the premiere thing or whatever, because it's the first time you've done it on the channel, right? Yeah, and J-Man's back, and that was cool, and he was a part of the first premiere on the S2K channel. And Yeah, uh, yeah but whose side is he on? Yeah, he's, uh, is, he the, is he the third man? Yeah, but whose side is he on? Uh-oh, is, is J-Man going to have a hill turn? Yeah, like his, he turns on S2K. Trip. He goes, yeah. oh Hogan, you know, Hogan was gone for a while, and then he came back and turned on Sting and Macho Man, turned on WCW. J-Man comes back, he comes down the aisle, Mexico goes, whose side is he on? And I go, what are you talking about, whose side is he on? Then he turns on us, and then he has, <laughs> I don't know, he has new members, he joins up with Wee Guy. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, he God. joins up with Wee Guy and the guy that flagged our channel. It was a conspiracy. <laughs> it was a conspiracy all along. It's me, Austin! It was me all I can, along, I can, Ronnie. I can see J-Man. He just ends up murdering both of them because he can't stand them. Yeah. And then, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, but you're in the ring and he tips you out of your chair. <laughs> oh, dear God, not again. <laughs> Jesus, that, that was, oh, my God. That was like almost a decade ago, eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It still haunts my nightmares. Yeah. Ever since I tipped Jeff out of his chair, brother. <laughs> just because his promo, SC2K, I got bored, brother. These are the guys I want as my friends. We're here taking over, brother. If you're listening, J Man, I have, I have, like I think I told you before, I don't hate you or not mad at you or anything. Say hi, bro. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, now J Man wouldn't even talk like that. Hey, brother, he'd be like, hey, what's going on out there? Oh, yeah, that's just how, yeah, how he well, always drinking talks. his Crown Royal. And then, uh, I yeah. It, in a rap what, 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 is, what does he live like? Where does he live drinking Crown Royal? I don't know anybody who drinks Crown Royal. Crown Royal Rumble. Uh, he does in the Trailer Park. The Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> he does in the Trailer Park <laughs> You know, you guys talked about that show for years, and then five years ago I finally watched it, and like, oh my god, I missed, like, so many good things. That's how I discovered the show, was through him. He uploaded, uh, I think he's still on his channel, The Best of Mr. Leahy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Re rest in peace, Mr. Leahy. Rest in yeah, peace. Jim Dunham, or what was his name? Yeah, I think that was it. Oh, I, I, he's Mr. Leahy to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, that was uh, a good way to start the year off, 2019, New Year's Day. The pr first ever premiere. The premiere of America's Solid Part 9. And no, I'm not going to use the premiere feature all the time. Just on certain videos for certain occasions. And especially if I can actually be live hey, on, at my computer or on my phone. Hey, my so God. I can engage in the chat with people. I can't always do that. So, um, but yeah, man, like, I wanted to test it out, and it's, it'd be pretty cool. I'll, I'll definitely utilize the Premiere feature on 
both channels uh, when I can, because that, that is a cool thing to uh, to to uh, utilize. Uh, a premiere, your video's gone live, it's gone public, and then you can chat with people while it's airing, airing, you know, or, or going live or going public for the first time. So yeah. that, that, that's really, really cool. I like that feature. And YouTube is a great site that has a lot of great features. And I have to kind of uh, piggyback off of what, uh, uh, what's his name? The guy that had a feud with, uh, well, a lot of people on YouTube. I hit the Archfiend. I have to piggyback off what the Archfiend said years ago. He goes, I love this freaking website. I love YouTube. But there's a lot of things wrong with it. It's kind of like Simon's Quest. I love Simon's Quest. But there's a lot of things wrong with it. You know, it's like a love-hate relationship almost. YouTube is a great site where I had great memories on the site. It's just the way they run things and allow certain things to happen and for people to be taken down falsely. I mean, Absolutely. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to jump into it, but uh, you know, we, we were talking about that whole uh, affair earlier with uh, Monday and Matt. You know who one of Monday and Matt's buddies are? One of his best buddies now. The we guy. No. Uh, no, no, Mr. Rich at Review Tech USA. Oh, well, you know, I, I, now, now Tipster's the new guy I go to. Oh yeah, cause, cause Rich, honestly, I, I still, I still talk to him occasionally. He's mundane Matt, but with more video games. That, that's all he is. Yeah, but you know what's funny? Rich was a part of SC2K very briefly. Mm -hmm. Just that one time. I, 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 I uh huh. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying. I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I really don't care, but, you know, he's sold his soul out to where he is, and if he's happy, hey, he's happy, that's, you know. And for those of you who may be curious, uh, Rich was in Let's Play Donkey Kong Country Part 1 on the S2K channel, I think this is back in 2010. It's before Rich blew up. Charlie was also in the commentary with us, and, uh, but uh, the audio quality at the time for Rich was not good. And uh, J-Man went on record as to say he didn't like that commentary too much because I think Charlie and Rich kept on talking about a butt monkey sex or something weird and creepy. I don't know. Whatever. Oh yeah, they they were they were not good at LPs. Like Charlie could handle a review, and Rich didn't unless he was talking about like maybe a quick thing about a game or about current events while he's playing a game. He was just he's not he's not made for an LP. He's just not. Uh, we can get all the way. I don't know what I do. Well, no, that's that's Ernest. That's exactly how you do an LP. You wing it. You really do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, say what you want about Charlie and Masterhand. As bad as they are, and maybe let's play commentaries. They're pretty good in reviews. Oh no, they they made excellent reviews. Absolutely, that's what I mean. Yeah, Charlie's just not Agreed. made for let's plays. Just not. Yeah, I agree. And. So that sums up 2018, unless you guys have anything you want to add before we go. Uh, I just got one little itty bitty script written out, so I don't screw it up. But, uh, okay. been, all right. I mean, it's been a good year for me, you know, 2018 was in general. You know, I got to do the, some LPs on the channel. It, it, you know, it, it's different from, you know, I've, I've been watching the channel for years. So, to actually do videos, that's been really cool. Uh, Silent right. Hill Restless Dream scenario. Um, the two-parter back in June 2018. Wow, almost coming up on June 2019. Um, being featured on the channel, all the other LPs, it's been great. Seeing them. And uh, the Umbrella Chronicles started back in October 1st, 2018. It seems like it's been doing pretty well. And, you know, hopefully I'm going to finish that up pretty soon. Like I said, I only started it back in October. And the only thing that hasn't been too good, you already went over it. You said it was two copyright strikes. Because I was pretty bummed about that, too. Because, like I said, I've been watching this channel since, you know, since you pretty much started off. Like, well, since 2010, I'll say. I've been around for a while watching. To actually be a part of it has been really, you know, it's been really, I can say, Mexico. Yep. That's all I gotta say. And it kind of reminds me of Tibbs. Tibbs would watch my videos for a long time, and then one day he started to be in my videos with me. So yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. You never know who will be next. Yeah. Who's next? Yeah. Oh, well, Goldberg. I mean, Jeff. Uh, you're next. Uh, you yeah. Know, you oh shit. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't wrestle Goldberg. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Roy Burst. Roy Mercer probably could. 
<laughs> if you haven't seen that, check out that prank call. That was funny. Um, but yeah, Jeff, you have anything you want to add before we go? No, uh, I, I just want to say it's been a wonderful year, and I, I just want to apologize. To you know, I didn't do a whole crap ton of videos. I'm, unfortunately, right now, I'm running a business. Things are getting, they're finally getting to the point where I can kind of set back. It's been almost four years now, and I'm almost to that point where you're going to have to deal with me a lot more on here, maybe in the next six months. I'm going to have yeah. to deal a lot more with, a lot more with Jeff on here because I'll have more free time. But when, when you're doing almost everything by yourself, I've got a couple part-time employees, but I, I don't know about you guys, but kids don't work as hard today. Like, I don't ask much, but it's hard to get some decent people. Yeah. That's for damn sure. I didn't mean to go on that much of a tangent, but I just want to say it's, it's it was a great year this year, uh, this past year, and I hope 2019 is just as good or even better. And Ronnie, well, we know Ronnie's going to be making, like, you know, a couple hundred videos, and that's always a good thing. Yeah, and, and like I said in my 2017 live stream, celebrate my 10th year anniversary, I said the only thing sure about Ron Moore is that nothing's for sure. And yes, I did steal that quote from Sting. Oh, copyright strike, we're shut down. Ah, uh, so. shit. Matt, Matt flagged us. Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> and you know, one thing, we were, we were getting ready to do part three of Ocarina Time. If we had uploaded that a little sooner, that would have probably got taken down too, and then the channel would have been taken down. What? Yeah, you would have got here. Horrible. And, and you know, it's funny, there was a time where Nintendo would have done that. I can't believe you survived that time, Ronnie, where Nintendo was copyright, copy striking everything. Yeah, and you know, I don't care if they third party, because I'll make money anyway. But, yeah. I mean, to, to, to go, even if you have the legal right to do it, does that mean it's morally right? I mean, it's just, it's video game footage, and... You know, we just want to do this for fun, and I know some companies might get mad, like if you make fun of their... There's been indie developers that would flag reviewers' videos falsely because they got butt hurt that their product was not reviewed in a positive light. Oh yeah, well if you make a crappy game, you should you should just own it at that point. If your game's shit, and you're like, well, yeah, I know the game's shit, maybe that'll entertain somebody. Yeah, and I mentioned this before, how does Retsupray get away with all these years of taking people's footage on YouTube and commentating over them? Well, I think it's because they're popular, honestly. That's the only thing I can think of. I guess so. If they, they probably filed retractions or copyright claims. I mean, oh, yeah, counter claims. And, and it's parody. Everything's parody. So, you know, they can at least claim that. Yeah, and I don't want to... It's not worth it for me to get this guy my personal information. I mean, this is BS. Like, I, I forgot to mention this story earlier. Um, I forgot the YouTuber's video that I watched. But he, he did a, a video on SS Sniper Wolf and how controversial she was. And it was someone that, uh, I think she filed a copyright claim on someone that said something negative about her. And the guy filed a counterclaim on her. And you know what that means? He has to give her his personal information. And so now she had his full first name, first and last name. And mm -hmm. so she did a video on him saying, I, I put this guy's name in the search engine. It turns out he's a registered sex offender. And so, yeah, that but it turns out he was not. She made up that lie about him just to get back at him. Ah, uh, okay. So, you know, stuff like that could happen. Like, to me, or, or something like, uh, they, this person gets my personal address or phone number, start prank calling me or texting me or making certain threats or whatever. Like, to, to provide a, my personal details maybe to a, a, a company, like Nintendo, uh -huh. is one thing. But to a random YouTuber that could be just be butthurt and just mess with my private information and put it on social media or whatever, that's not worth it. And Absolutely. I, I should at least have his personal information too if this is a legal dispute, right? And like I said in that video, when you get to a car wreck, what do you do? You usually exchange information. Why yeah. can't we do this here? But whatever, it is what it is. Hopefully no more damage will happen. And the copyright strikes go away after three months. So, and I mean, so it is what it is. I just hope nothing like this ever ha has to happen again. And if I'm using someone else's footage. Hopefully they won't get butthurt about it. And J-Man even told me, you know what, maybe it's, it's the fact that you did mention their channel in the description box. Maybe if you hadn't have done that, they probably wouldn't have noticed that you took their footage. I don't know about that, but I would feel better defending myself saying, hey, I gave you credit, rather than them finding out I took their footage and I never gave them credit for it to begin with. So uh, that, that that's the, the, the ethical part of that is like, well, hey, I gave credit and this falls into fair use anyway. If anything, I'm giving a shout out to this channel. Not that that person needs a shout out from me because they have 13,000 subscribers, the person that flagged me. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they need my help, 
but still, like, man, uh, just at least post a comment. Hey, thank you very much for... Uh, even you posted that comment, Ernest. You said, thank you very much for using my footage, <laughs> or whatever you posted. I did. Yeah. So we were talking about that, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the channel and post, thank you for using my footage. Yeah. Yeah, so... But there you go, that's something up 2018. It. For the most part, it was great. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in 2019. And we'll get started on the Ocarina of Time LP again. And yeah, so there you go. There you go. And guys, we are out of here. I'm Ron Moore. God bless. Take care. I'm, I'm Jeff. Uh, donate to Ronnie, because he, he could use every dime. I mean, um, yeah. yeah. My court battle. No. Yeah, yeah. It says in never ending court battle with Mundane Matt over copyright of Nintendo games. <laughs> It'll never. That's gonna be the new joke this year. Now you you just landed it, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Have an ECW year. Take care.